It is my pleasure to welcome you to the next talk, uh, which is Zach Coplin. Uh, he is a recent graduate of the Louisiana public school system, uh, and he will be going to Rice University in the fall. Uh, but his talk today is about his experiences dealing with legislation about creationism uh, in uh, Louisiana, and uh, and what that's been like for him, and uh, and how you can. Be a, a legislative watchdog for creationism in your state as well. So please join me in welcoming Zach. Thanks, sir. Oh, I'm just going to put this in my pocket. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and there's your time. All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you all for having me here. So my state is addicted to creationism. And uh, in 1987, the Supreme Court had to throw out Louisiana's first creationism law in Edwards versus Aguilar. Now we've come back for another hit of the crack pipe of creationism, and uh, we passed the Louisiana Science Education Act. Um, it was signed to law by our governor, Bobby Jindal, back in 2008. Um, we're officially repeat offenders when it comes to creationism. So the misnamed, misguided Louisiana Science Education Act was passed overwhelmingly by the Louisiana legislature. In total, there was only three votes against it in the House and the Senate. Um, out of about 150 people. <laughs> okay, so uh, barely anyone had the courage to uh, say no to this law. And I won't lie, it's an extremely clever piece of legislation. I mean, it never once mentions intelligent design or creationism because it's meant to dodge court rulings like Edwards versus Aguilar or more recently uh, Dover versus Kitzmiller. For any of you who don't know about that one, it's the uh, Supreme Court case that declared intelligent design unconstitutional. So. Um, basically, intelligent design is creationism, I'm sure you all know this, shoved into a lab coat to make it look scientific and get around court rulings. It didn't work. Um, and it's still patently unconstitutional. Now we have the Louisiana Science Education Act, which basically encourages teachers to use supplemental materials to critique evolution and other controversial subjects like global warming and cloning. Now, like on that one, it's like, for example, you can argue over the ethics of cloning, but it happens, it's not really controversial in terms of the science. Like, there's not much you can really argue about the controversy unless, like it just sort of shows it's just political controversies that this law is about. Now, uh, throughout the bill and the talking points from the supporters of the bill, it's all about, quote, critical thinking and like, teaching all the evidence and just teaching, I mean, I'm sure you all know about teaching the controversy and that campaign. Um, Unfortunately, you don't need a uh, law to teach critical thinking in science class because that is basically what science is. You do need a law if you want to sneak pseudoscience into science class, though. Um, and that's what the LCA does, the Louisiana Science Education Act. And so make no mistake, the Louisiana Science Education Act is a creationism law. Um, when the bill was first introduced, uh, Senator Ben Nevers, the sponsor of it, he let the cat out of the bag a little bit and said the Louisiana Family Forum, which is Louisiana's affiliate to focus on the family, who, by the way, also claimed to have uh, drafted and promoted the Louisiana Science Education Act. Um, he said they asked him to sponsor this bill because they wanted creationism in public schools. So that seems pretty wide open, but it gets a little bit better. So when the Louisiana State Board of Education was uh, implementing rules on the creationism law, they originally had uh, made rules outlawing non-science and uh, more specifically creationism and intelligent design, the family form had a bit of a fit and uh, got those thrown out. So now we have a law that's meant to promote critical thinking with no sort of safeguards at all because it's creationism law. Um, and we can also go into more detail on why it's creationism law later. Uh, I've always been offended having this law in my state. I can't believe I'm living in the one state in America that currently has a creationism law. Like, you think like, I mean, they've been trying to pass it in other states, but we are the only state where it's passed overwhelmingly, been signed by the governor, and is law. Um, and so this was sort of my last chance this year to fight it, because I didn't know if I was going to stay in state for college. I didn't know what was going to happen. And honestly, I wouldn't be a high school kid, so it doesn't really affect me when I'm in college. Like. I don't have as much of a platform to argue against it on in college. Um, so I just decided this was the year I had to do it. I made it my senior project for high school to repeal this law. Um, and so the first thing I did is, do any of y'all know? <laughs> do any of y'all know about Dr. Barbara Forrest? Um, okay, she is 
and she was an expert witness at Dover versus Kitzmiller, I should say, the star witness at Dover versus Kitzmiller. Um, she's one of the foremost experts on creationism and on fighting creationism in the country. And luckily for me, she lives like 25 miles down the road in uh, one of the uh, creationism hotspots in our state, Livingston Parish. Um, so we met and started working on a repeal. And the first thing I did, I needed to do, was find someone to sponsor the repeal. And given there was only three senators, or three, not three. Uh, legislators who voted against the repeal. I went with uh, Senator Karen Carter Peterson from New Orleans, and uh, she w she was all about this repeal and all about teaching science. And uh, Representative Walt Leger, who was actually from her district too, uh, agreed to handle our House legislation. So we got pretty remarkably two really brave Louisiana legislators on our side right away. Um, and then I th just at the same time. This was all happening. The creationists in Louisiana decided they also wanted to throw out biology textbooks um, because they need more justification to use supplemental materials. So uh, that's where I really found my voice. I've always been afraid of public speaking, but uh, when you're really proud of what you're saying, it's not that hard to speak. That's what I think. So. so. I testified at two meetings, one before the textbook advisory committee, which was a quickly put together panel that we assumed was stacked, but um, we actually won that one. It was shocking, and I have to say thank you to them again. But uh, they listened to us, and we won overwhelmingly there. Um, and they voted for the textbooks with no apologies, no disclaimers, no revisions, no supplemental materials, no nothing. And so at that point, we had uh, another meeting in front of real politicians this time instead of educators, and we were a bit worried about that one. Um, and that was, I mean, it really helped for me because it's like I wasn't saying anything different than any of the biology teachers testifying, any of the college professors, but I was a kid saying it, and they really listened to me. Um, and if I can give sort of one piece of advice, it's like you always hear that you're a kid, no one's going to listen to you. That's not true. They listen to you because you're a kid, and your voice has a lot more power because you're a kid, because kids usually don't care. And so when they do, it's really shocking to politicians, and it makes a huge difference. Um, and like, and it's sort of sad because like my classmates don't realize it and I can't tell you how many times I've been told by classmates that no, I'm wrong, the politicians didn't listen to me. I'm like, no, no like I sort of, like they definitely listened to me for no other reason than I was a kid. That was what made it special. So definitely speak out because being younger makes a huge difference. Um, and then we came out on top on the other two meetings, um, and our State Board of Ed Education came through for us. As a side topic, um, basically, we got really lucky this year. As a response to us winning the textbooks, they tried to pass a, creation, a new creationism law, taking all authority away from the State Board of Education to decide the textbooks. We luckily managed to kill that one in committee, and that was a huge victory for us. We actually killed them straight out in a up and down vote. So that, that was huge for Louisiana, although we didn't get the repeal passed. Um, <laughs> But the other thing, from the textbook controversy, I'll give you a few example, examples of my first exposure to creationism. So first, I didn't know this, but apparently uh, evolution is responsible for uh, Columbine, in case y'all need to know that. Um, and we actually had uh, Judge Daryl White, he's a local creationist, uh, he's actually been busted into Texas by like wall builders to testify in creationism, but uh, he uh, brought in a shirt similar to one that Dylan Klebo owned that said natural selection, and I literally quote similar, and he pulled it out in the uh, Board of Education meetings and showed it to everyone. And I mean, I'm not even sure what to say about that. It was so unbelievable. Um, another occasion, he, the same judge uh, blamed um, evolution on Hitler and pretty much compared uh, Dr. Barbara Forrest and uh, Dr. Ken Miller, who uh, I think, I mean, he's written the most popular biology textbook being sold today. Um, basically compared them to Hitler and uh, the Holocaust and stuff. So, on other things, I apparently am responsible for Hurricane Katrina. I am very, I, I'm honored by this. Like, I just see, like, I didn't know I was that powerful that I could cause a gigantic storm that was three year, happened three years before the law that I tried to repeal three years after happened. Like, it's, and the other thing is, I thought, I mean, Back in 2005, when the storm actually happened, the same people who were blaming me for the storm said it was for the uh, gays and prostitutes in New Orleans. So, uh, I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I, I like the title now. Like, 
Uh, yeah, bringer of storms. <laughs> bringer of the worst storm we've seen in who knows how long. Anyway, it would be really hilarious, except that these people are serious and they are very successful. I mean, the Louisiana Science Education Act is a serious threat. It is using, it's being used exactly as intended. I mean, teachers in Washtenaw Parish, Louisiana, are reportedly teaching creationism. The Livingston Parish School Board, where Barbara lives, actually went as far as to try and use this law as justification to put creationism as part of the curriculum. Um, and Tangipahoa Parish is also preparing to follow suit. School board members in St. Bernard are advocating for creationism using this law. Um, so we need, really need to stop this law before science education for kids in Louisiana gets ruined. Um, and then I'll go back to the repeal. So basically, after I got Senator Peterson and Representative Leger on board, I started working on endorsements. We've reached out to the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the American Society for Biology and Molecular Biology, the American Institute for Bio, uh, Biological Science, and uh, the, they made the most difference. The AAS endorsement, the Clergy Letter Project endorsement, um, and also the biggest thing is the Nobel Laureate Letter. We have 44 Nobel Laureates who have endorsed the repeal. Um, I, that started, I basically got in contact with Sir Harry Croto, um, and I have to give him the biggest thing. I mean, he is amazing. Um, and I asked if he could help me get Nobel Laureates to endorse my repeal. I drafted the letter, and I sent it to him, and the next day he had 10 signatures on it for me. So. Uh, I started from there, and that I from then on I just started emailing Nobel laureates, and I would get a few a week to sign on each week, and it was a huge game changer. It's really hard to argue about science against 44 of the best scientists in the world. Like, of course, that doesn't stop the creationists from doing that. Like, for example, uh, one of our sitting state senators, uh, Senator Julie Quinn, dismissed the Nobel laureates and all the other scientists and everyone else who endorsed her appeal and all the kids because uh, she was tired of hearing about what to do from all these people with little letters behind their names. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that is completely serious. She said that in committee to us. Um, another, I mean, it's just, it was unbelievable. So I'll get back to them later, but uh, another part of my campaign was the message. Um, I mean, in addition to the usual arguments we had about separation of church and state, the most important argument was the economic argument, because that resonates with people right now. We have a huge, I mean, we're coming out of the worst recession in 90 years. It, it's pretty big. So uh, I've nicknamed the Louisiana Science Education Act uh, the job killing creationism law, because <laughs> yeah, for all of you who get that reference, I think I, I really wanted to. I really wanted to title the repeal bill the uh, repeal of the Job Killing Creationism Law Act. Um, but anyway, so why is this a job killing creationism law? Because it kills jobs. Um, it kills science and technology jobs in Louisiana. Like, kids like me are competing for college across the country, and uh, we, won't get the co we won't get offered admission to the colleges we want, mainly because, I mean, the schools just can't trust our biology background right now. Um, we want to get jobs in like working for, for example, Baton Rouge has a cutting edge uh, research center, the Pennington Biomedical Research Center, and uh, it'd be great to work there. It's an awesome place. Uh, or in the New Orleans Bio District, they're working really hard to grow their, uh, I mean, the bio industry, but they're going to hire people from out of state, not Louisiana kids, because we've been, we have a creationism law. Um, and so if you need any more evidence, this is my favorite. Um, just check Monster Jobs and search creationism. You'll get a message that says, uh, sorry, there are zero creationism jobs. Um, that, uh, zero, yes. Um, because there are no creationism jobs in scientific fields. Now, there are biology jobs. I mean, you search biology and you'll find over a thousand. So we can also go on. And that's not the only way it kills jobs. Um, what company is going to relocate and force their employees to move from an excellent public school system in, let's say, North Carolina to the state that allows creationism? Like, they're not going to do that. And the same line of thinking, no scientist is going to come work in what's considered the most anti-science state in the country. Um, and then we're driving away, like, would you ever invest in science educate, or, ah, science innovation in Louisiana because we're really considered anti-science? Like, you wouldn't do that. You're going to stick to a place uh, maybe like even Texas, Houston has some huge uh, biomedical facilities, and that, that's a much better investment than, for example, the New Orleans Bio District. As much as I want to grow, like it's gonna, they're going to have a lot more trouble investing or attracting investment that they need. Um, lastly, and this is the biggest way, um, one of our staple industries is tourism, 
and it's the third largest industry in Louisiana and the largest in New Orleans. A large part of that revenue comes from conventions. Um, science organizations used to love coming here. Um, now they don't. They used to bring in thousands of people and millions of dollars to my state, but they're boycotting us now. Um, one organization, the Society for Integrative and Comparative Biology, went so far as not only to boycott us, but to uh, pull their pre-scheduled convention as a protest. Um, I actually, I get, I've gotten a couple of emails from uh, their past president, John Pierce, who he really likes New Orleans and can't wait to come back and is dying for me to repeal this law, but he's not going to come back until the law is repealed. And he emails me, he's emailed, emailed me multiple times asking if he thinks we'll get it soon so he can come back. But, uh, that, so basically, we're losing tourism revenue. Anyways, despite this powerful message, despite 44 Nobel laureates, despite 65,000 signatures on the change.org petition in support of the repeal, despite students showing up for a rally, for the, um, for the committee meeting, for everything, we still lost. Um, and honestly, our elected representatives even insulted us to prove their creationist bona fides to the powerful folks on the family lobby. Um, and we lost this year. But honestly, it was victory and defeat because at the committee meeting, I had a small, I mean, normally before this, I had a small group of devoted activists working to help me challenge the law. Not a lot of kids. Um, I had school friends who came with me to the meeting because they were friends with me. They agreed with me, but it wasn't their fight. It was, I mean, they, they came to support me out there. And then they got to the committee hearing and they watched our elected, rep, our elected senators ignore reason, do what the senators knew was wrong, and then insult them in the process. That generally makes you mad. So uh, now I've got some kids who are ready to go after this law and are taking on the repeal for next year. Um, and that, like one of the, just Sandra Quinn, I've mentioned her a couple times, she told us, we got out of school despite this terrible law and that's why it doesn't need to be repealed. Um, she missed the point that we're fighting for our brothers and sisters and friends who are still in school um, or the kids who actually were in school at the time too. Um, anyway, so we're fighting for the state's future, which I thought was supposed to be her job. Anyway, on Senator Quinn, the Creationist Family Forum gives a uh, Gladiator Award each year. Now, I think Senator Quinn really wants to win that. Um, apparently, the way to do that is by attacking kids and Nobel laureates over their scientific background. Um, and I guess the Gladiator Award fits the uh, title because it's a second century award given for a second century mentality. <laughs> um, okay, so, oh yeah, <laughs> Now there are a number of kids invested and angry about this, and they're ready to take leaderships on the, F in, uh, on the repeal. We're going to come back, we're going to try and have 100 Nobel laureates behind it for next year, and we're going to be even stronger. We'll have more kids, and we'll, we'll see how long it takes to get this all repealed, but we'll do it. Um, and the thing is, we're young. We're younger than all the people fighting against us. In gem like, the average age of our side compared to the creationists, there's a noticeable difference. Um, it's a generational issue. I mean. The younger generation wants to be taught science in science class and we will repeal this law. I mean, my friend Ben, who was testifying with me, basically summed our generation up. It's like, every week there's a new iPhone, app, or invention, all depend on science and technology, and that's, I mean, that's our generation's stuff, not the people who want creationism in the science classroom. Um, we do have a lot of work. I mean, it's not just Louisiana. Other states are trying to pass creationism, creationism laws, um, like Tennessee and Oklahoma. Tennessee was a really big worry this year. We thought they might get it. Um, and then there's always local school boards. We need to be ready to tell local school boards to keep creationism out of science classrooms. And we need to be able to tell politicians like Chris Christie and Tim Plenty, who should know better, to stop pandering to the creationists and like saying things like local school boards should decide whether creationism was taught. Because you know what? Creationism is unconstitutional. Local school boards should not decide. Like, there shouldn't be an issue. It just shouldn't happen. And then while we're on presidential candidates, or some of them at least, um, I'll go to my favorite topic, which is Michelle Bachman. Now, uh, Michelle Bachman likes to make stuff up. Um, she has said there's a controversy over evolution, and uh, hundreds and hundreds of scientists, many of them Nobel laureates, uh, believe in intelligent design. Now, she made this up, and uh, presidential candidates, I think we all agree, should not make stuff up. Like, um, that's why I've called her bluff and asked her to match my 44 Nobel laureate scientists, uh, and, and she can't. Um, she actually was recently asked at the Republican Leadership Conference by a reporter from the New Orleans Gambit, to uh, name a single Nobel laureate to back up her claims. Um, guess how many she can name? Any ideas? No. There we go. <laughs> yep, yeah, none. Anyway, so she made her statement up. And I want this to haunt Michelle Bachman for the rest of her campaign because, you know, it's bad for her country. Her prominence gives creationists in Louisiana and across the country false authority to, like, sneak creationists in the classroom. And then second, it's honestly just a matter of integrity. Like, 
presidential candidates should not make stuff that Michelle Bachman did. There are not hundreds and hundreds of Nobel laureates who support creationism. I don't know any. Um, and Michelle Bachman just needs to be asked, show us your Nobel laureates at every one of her rallies because until she can answer that, she's making stuff up and presidential candidates should not make stuff up. Um, and so since I began this repeal I've learned the other side relentless and well organized, but we can beat them. We actually went two for three in legislative battles with the creationists this year, which is unbelievable in Louisiana. And while we didn't get the repeal this year, we made progress and we're going to try again. We won the media battle. All the major newspapers in Louisiana strongly supported us. We've got the facts and justice on our side, and we've got our, my generation energized. Um, we just need to keep politicians like Chris Christie from make them stop pandering and support brave politicians like Senator Peterson and Representative Leger who uh, will fight for science and for the students. And we can make this happen. And thank you all. Thank you. Five minutes questions? Okay. So, first person. Do you have any nationally recognized politicians or organizations, not organizations, but leaders that may have been, it may have been a risk for them to take this jump to support you? Um, I mean, Senator Peterson took a huge risk in supporting this, but it hasn't, we haven't gotten too much into sort of national politics. We've, it's been, more been like celebrities. I mean, we've had like Adam Savage and, uh, Patton Oswalt on our side and people like that who I I mean it's always a substantial risk for them to come out on controversial issues but I'm, and I'm glad they do it on our side um, but not so much politics mainly because you don't want I mean if you're a national politician you just don't get involved with local politics anyway and so uh, How exactly do they go about working creationism into science curriculum because I'm not entirely sure. Like, I mean, there are these things. Have you experienced them actually teaching it? I've been really lucky. My school has had, I mean, my science teachers would be, they're very offended by this law and 100% behind me. Um, and so, like, I've been lucky. But there's, for example, there's these things called uh, text add-ons that are advertised on the Louisiana Family Forum's website. And basically, there are a bunch of leading questions about sort of, like, I guess, questions that high school kids shouldn't, there's obviously answers to them. We actually debunked them for the uh, Board of Education meetings, but uh, high school kids shouldn't know the answers to them, and they're just meant to confuse kids and make them think evolution doesn't exist. So it's like, it's just, there's nothing, there's nothing teaching creationism except for like you can teach, there's not much to teach there. It's like, okay, here's the book of Genesis, let's read this, and then we're done. And that's not much science. It's not science at all. But they, they can try and undermine evolution. That's mainly what creationism is these days. Mm. How much of a uh, support group have you got from the universities in Louisiana? Um, I mean, there's a lot of research around there, There's not enough, mainly because... I mean, we've gotten some. But the problem is there was huge budget cuts this year, like $500 million or something yeah. from the public school, the university system, and everyone was afraid to lose their jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, it it uh it allow it support. I mean, there's two there's two main reasons for this law. The first is to and these is widely recognized as a creationism law. It's basically the state tacitly supporting creationism, which will Im uh, intimidate teachers who want to teach uh, evolution to not teach it properly. That's one reason. The second is it provides legal cover for teachers who want to actually teach creationism because they can say, I was just critiquing evolution with my supplemental materials. And like, we don't need that there. If you are actually teaching science to critique evolution, then there shouldn't be any risk at all. You don't need another law. But when you do want to teach creationism, then you need a law. So it allows teachers to teach any alternative Yeah. Well, I mean, under this law, you could teach astrology or pretty much you could teach about the flying uh, spaghetti monster, anything you really wanted. It's just the main purpose is creationism. I mean, it gives pretty broad justification to, if you can justify it as a critique, then you can say, like, we actually had, for example, one of the teachers, uh, one, a student came in and was like, my teacher basically explained why this law is bad because he taught about Michelangelo being an alien in my science class, and it was perfectly legally justified with this law. Um, <laughs> And, that, and he's like, he was like, basically, this is why this law is bad. Because I've done nothing wrong with this, although it's obviously completely 
Looney. Um, I'm curious, what kind of support did you get from the state uh, teachers association? Um, we got the Louisiana Science Teachers Association was endorsed the repeal, and they were behind us. We've had members testify at uh, committee meetings with us, and we've got some strong support from them. It wasn't really listened to by the people who should be listening to it, but we had support. What kind of uh, news coverage have, have you gotten uh, 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 down there? Who, who's, who's writing about this? What, particularly what radio and TV coverage? Um, pretty much, honestly, in Louisiana, all of it. Like, this was a pretty big issue in the state, and there was there's there have honestly been hundreds of articles locally about this. Um, what else? Any other questions? Oh. Honestly, that's usually like a lot of the time it's assumed that that kind of stuff happens. I mean, and that's sort of the, the purpose of this law is to intimidate teachers who are like, the state wants creationism taught. We don't want to ruffle any feathers here and teach evolution. And so that is the other part of the law is the intimidation factor. Um, and that, like, it's a different issue. It's um, like, it's way too common where I live. And we're not even on that. Like, it's almost like, we want to get through getting the creationism out first before we can even like take on that issue. Uh, have you considered doing question. some sort of uh, like lawsuit to um, you know, sue various people, like maybe individual politicians that support it, sue them <coughs> for their breach of their oath of office? We probably, I mean, that's honestly too, like, I wouldn't want to get into that. Um, and on a court case against this law, this is, I mean, it's a tough law. I mean, it's not, it's like, it's a clever law, and it's like, it will take years and years. I mean, we, will, we can win the court case, but it's just, it'll be faster and cheaper and better for my state to repeal it. I mean, honestly, if it takes us five years to repeal this law, it will probably be much faster than the court case. Oh, yeah, I was just asking if that would be a contingency. I've not been thinking about court case, because I think, I mean, I know we'll repeal this law eventually, and honestly, no matter how long it takes, it's going to be better than a court case. So, no.